Well, hello everybody on YouTube. How are you guys today? Well, today, what we're going to talk about mostly today is this way back landlord I bought years ago. Uh, down at my local Lowe's, I don't think they sell this anymore. I think this might be a discontinued model, but it still seems to work for what I need it for. But I'm not going to do any type of modifications to it because of one issue, water resistance. Now if I do any type of modifications to it, I will I lose the water resistance of this unit. Now, the biggest downfall with this unit itself, with this device, okay, with this lantern that I use uh, mostly every single day, is the D size batteries. Uh, it doesn't last that long on these at all. It lasts about four to six hours and that's about it. This uses a lot more energy uh, to actually produce the light you need. Now, the biggest problem, if you guys notice, inside of this uh, unit is we got two nine watt mercury bulbs. These are fluorescent bulbs. This is what this little unit uses. Now, how does this thing actually work? Okay, we have the power source and we have the rods that go from the bottom all the way up to the top of the actual switch housing where the power supply is at. This is what controls both of the uh, light bulbs uh, for this unit itself. Now, I'm going to be tinkering around with it and experimenting, seeing what I can actually use. Now, well, I got, you know, cheapo D batteries, and you actually need, while I'm using dollar store batteries, like I could use uh, a very expensive brilliant of uh, batteries, like energizers or door cell. Again, it doesn't much matter because if you buy a battery uh, on the shelf, you don't know how long the battery's been sitting there, guys. You just don't know. Does don't know. What you're gonna need is you're gonna need a screwdriver to take out the four screws, to take out the bottom housing of this unit. This is where the 8D batteries actually goes uh, in this little housing. And what's kind of nice is this actual system uses 12 volts itself, and that's why I got a 12 volt lead acid battery. Now, biggest problem with this. You can't fit this uh, on the inside of the lantern itself. That's the reason why they designed it with 8D batteries. Okay, you guys can see I have four sets of batteries. Okay, I have four set here and I got a four set though. Okay, now, yes, D batteries can be quite expensive, but it doesn't much matter to me. Okay, and we also got some Elgo clips, we got the battery. We're gonna be testing this out. And seeing if it will actually work with one of these type of lead acid batteries. Now, one thing you might have to do is, again, you may have to modify it to actually put an adapter end on the back of the lantern itself. Right back here. This is where a plug would have gone, a, a power adapter plug would have gone. But this is a low end uh, way back lantern, guys. Not too uh, fixed, not too expensive, you know, just a very cheap uh, unit. And yes, I actually do like the design and actually the build quality of this unit itself. It's like it's rugged and it's like it's not going to break on you. I really like it. It's a uh, very unique and uh, nice design as well in a very uh, good way. But the bad note is the 8 uh, D batteries and also the uh, fluorescent lights I do not like to use because again the mercury inside these little bulbs himself but that's the way this lantern was made. Now you can get own different lanterns like ones that have the old incandescence or one that has new technology with the old e, uh, bulbs and all. But this is how this unit actually works. Okay, if you want to really know how this unit works, you guys can see we have two rods, a positive and a negative rod on each side of the fluorescent 
lights. One would be the positives, one would be the negatives. Going up to, again, to this little circuit board, where the thing connects right up here. This is the power board. This is what the brains of this whole unit is. Uh, to control this whole uh, unit. It's very cool. It's very awesome. And it's, yes, it's also 100% water resistant, not 100% water proof. Now, if you want to go ahead and mod it, if you have the exact same way back land or you want to put a plug on it, go right ahead there, guys. That's totally fine by me, and that's okay. Now I'm going to take the bottom housing off. This is actual the battery door where the 8D batteries actually go into uh, into this housing right here, and this actually goes up and it screws on to the inside of this, on the outside of that, before we can actually put uh, the batteries in. Now, we look on the inside of the Rayback unit, you guys can notice, we got two rods, like I said, one's a negative and one is a plus. Now, we gotta figure out which one's a negative and which one's the plus. That's the mystery of this game. Now, I'm just going to use this a like, standard red light or red black uh, cable seal for one for the negatives and one for the plus. Now, of course, you're going to have to take the uh, battery housing off out of here. This is typically where the aqua sits. You would take the four screws out, and this is where this unit sits right there. You pull that out, and you test it this way, and see what actually works for you guys. Now, I haven't thought of actual really, really modding this at all, guys, because I think it works fine with the uh, D batteries. Now, I'm putting the all gear clips on this side, because I think that's the positive side, but I'm not as potential. That may be the negative side. But long if it powers up to light bulbs, you should be fine. And that's the, uh, that's how I clipped it right now, you guys can see. But this will not be a good idea because now it's all open and water can get into it. But it's a way you can actually modify it, like I said before. Just drill a little hole here, put your adapter here, or put your type of wire, whatever you want to use, and you can uh, put it down. Now, we're going to see if this actual is going to work like this or not. But I don't know here, guys. I'm just going to use this 12 volt. Uh, battery here. This is a 70 amp 12 volt uh, sealed battery. Uh, I charged it uh, last night before I can do this type of experiment and also education for you guys and see what you guys can come up with a different way of using uh, this uh, unit itself in a different fashion. I'll kind of put out a thing kind of here for you guys can see what's going on. We got the eight batteries. We got the little inside soaked uh, for the batteries, and we got the bottom itself. Now, this has its own on and off switch. Again, it's on the actual top of the unit instead of on the bottom of the unit like you normally see most lanterns. Now, let's see if we can actually get this to work. Uh-oh. Nope. It's not working now. I think I have it reversed. And I think I do here, guys. And that's an easy fix. Make sure you actually put the positives on the outside of the terminal block for the for it to work. Takes a little time. Now I kind of mixed it up, but hey, you know what? This is kind of my first time. You guys can see the positive sides on this side, and negative sides on that side. But hey. This is my first time doing this with this type of lantern. Now let's see. Ah, there we go. Hey guys, can see? Not actual works. Uh, both lights light up, and one light lights up. Apparently, I always only had it reversed. But that happens because you're just trying to experiment and see what you can actually do with these old style lanterns. Now, again, how do you put an external battery <laughs> on this lantern? Not without putting the alligator clips on it and seeing if it actually works or not. But, like I said, it's a couple of different ways you can actually mod it. Uh, drill a hole in the back, put a little plug, uh, DC plug, 12 volts, 
and that's how you can actually get this whole uh, system to work like it's supposed to. And that's pretty cool. It's nifty. I saw it's kind of neat. I think it's kind of neat for you guys. We can understand on how this actually works. Now, is the rods insulated from each other? Uh, the answer is absolutely yes because the all ports. Uh, again, you should actually have uh, one thing. You should actually have a plastic sleeve over top of the rods themselves. But they do not. This is like I said, uh, way back made this unit uh, years ago, and it's a nice little unit. I think it's kind of nice to actually get this type of unit to work off of external battery, not without modifications to put a hole in the back of the unit and put a DC jack uh, on the back for it to work. Now, let's go to this guy. You guys can see it was a little circuit board would have gone. Or a DC jack would have gone right there. But again, with this model, because this is a low end model, it didn't actually include that. And that's why you kind of have to uh, be stuck with using D size batteries. And yes, you have eight of them. So you guys can see you got eight. And that's just the way this unit works. And it seems to work pretty good on these batteries, but it doesn't really last that long. And yes, Got any screwdriver to take out the four screws, and I like it. Now, again, this is a fluorescent light, and this will take a little bit of time to warm up, and it seems to work just fine with the lower modification with that external battery versus using D batteries. But I recommend uh, staying with the D batteries. This not is under no warranty at all by your AVAC or by the store where I bought it from. I had this years ago long time ago. Alright guys, this was a good education for you guys to understand on how this little unit seems to work. If you guys are brand new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment down below. Please like, please share. Peace out. Bye guys. Hopefully see you in the next vlog. Thank you for watching today's vlog. Alright, later guys. Have a good day.